Hey everybody, I am Amanda Buckner, owner and operator of Untamed Fitness Martial Arts in Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. We have just opened our first location um, maybe about 20 days ago, and so far everything's going swimmingly as they say. Um, but what I want to do today is I wanted to make a video on teaching you guys of um, not necessarily going and having to buy your own gym in order to be successful, right? There's so many personal trainers and yoga instructors and massage therapists, even though we have different niches that we focus on, we're all pretty much the same. We're all independent contractors, all use 1099s. And the problem with being your own boss is sometimes you kind of don't know where to go. Like I always say, like, you don't know what you don't know. And so sometimes people will get stuck in not knowing where to go, maybe not getting enough referrals, not knowing where to advertise themselves. And these really, really awesome trainers and contractors and people that have a lot of um, passion for what it is that they do in their industry all of a sudden have to um, switch over or get in a different job just because they weren't educated enough in order to get through business wise. Um, and, you know, everyone had to go through this. And I just wanted to share my uh, successful tips with you of if you are an independent contractor or um, someone that, like I said, is a 1099, your massage therapist, personal trainer, um, life coach, uh, those types of people are really going to benefit from what I'm going to tell you right now. So this video is intended to deliver the best practices to run a very successful either one-on-one -on -one personal training business, your yoga training business, physical therapy, um, anything where you work one-on-one -on -one with a client. So this should give you your sales tactics in order to make even the most <laughs> introverted trainer feel more comfortable um, give you pricing structures to make it easier for you to um, feel confident in the price that you're giving to your clients, and then also some advertising methods and uh, be able to generate leads and turn those leads into clients furthermore. So the experiences and methods and tactics that I'm going to explain is the combination of my own personal experiences, as well as um, the insight that I've gotten from other trainers and um, very successful people in the industry today in 2023. <clears throat> so being a good trainer or having enough passion is not enough. Too many people leave the industry literally every single day just because they're ignoring the business problems that they had or they don't know where to go to um, once they, once they um, fully exhaust their current clientele of referrals and um, you know, they've, they've asked all their friends and family of if they have any people that are looking for personal trainers or physical therapists or anything, right? Um, one of the most common questions I get from other people that are self-employed is, how do I know how much I should charge? I started out doing personal training uh, at $30 an hour, which to some of you, you're like, oh, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. For others, you're saying like, wow, how did you live off of that? The caveat is I didn't. <laughs> At the time, um, I luckily was uh, still living with my uh, husband and he was in the military. And so I kind of had this little bit of leeway um, to, you know, cover the cost that I was trying to have a race to the bottom, right? I was trying to beat other personal trainers that were kind of like in a little bit further ahead of me, had a little bit more experience, and it was a race to the bottom, right? That's what they call it. Of oh, you're gonna you're gonna charge 35, I'm gonna charge 30. You're gonna charge 30, I'm gonna charge 25. So the idea of that is the lower the price, the more people that'd be interested in your service, right? However, when I was charging $30 an hour, it was $15 an hour for my babysitter to come and watch my daughter while I was training this lady. It took me 20 minutes to drive to the gym. <laughs> so the end of the day, uh, I'm charging this lady $30 an hour, which by the way, uh, she heckled me every single day that we ever got together saying that I charge too much. And so having that type of, uh, that type of relationship where your client does not respect your time and does not think that you're worth enough, 
I'm going to tell you right now, just get out, just drop them way easier to move on from that type of situation than to let that mental state um, marinate in your head of like, I'm not even worth $30 an hour. Um, but like I said, I had to buy, pay my my uh, babysitter $15 an hour. It took me 20 minutes to drive to the gym, an hour for training, 20 minutes to drive back. And so I was completely out of the $30. It literally paid for me to get a babysitter for that amount of time. Um, so moving forward, what I ended up doing was changing my, my price structure in order to reflect what I needed to live and then uh, seeing how many hours I wanted to work, right? So let's say uh, if I want to work 60 hours a week, okay, cool. I can, I can charge $30 an hour, but I really don't want to do that. So I'm only working $20 or I'm only working 20 hours a week. And um, my price is a little bit higher just because I do have a little bit more things going on. My time is way more valuable. And as you progress and get more familiar with your niche, whatever it is that you're interested in, in your program, um, it's really going to help skyrocket your, your own self-worth, attract better clients that are going to understand why they're paying a certain price. And then you're going to not really have to deal with those people that are undercutting um, your, your price point. Um, I, I don't even talk to the, really talk to those people anymore. Not because, um, you know, I'm like, oh, well, you don't want to pay me, you know, like $100 an hour. I get it. But um, think of it this way. If you went to a, let's say a lawyer, Okay, lawyers baseline two fifty an hour. That's why getting a lawyer is very expensive, right? But the thing that you're going after, if you do need a lawyer, you want to make sure it's done right. You want to make sure it's done by a professional, and you are literally paying them for the hours and years that they are spending um, getting familiarized with their niche. Let's say. Um, you know, uh, like uh, child custody, right? Let's go over child custody. So like, okay, you're going to go to court for making sure that you can, um, you know, either see your kids, get visitation rights, or, um, you know, even even get your kids entirely because like maybe they're, the significant other is like out of their mind bonkers, right? So you want to make sure that you get a top of the line lawyer that knows what they're doing, that is very well researched and knows how to win their case, right? You don't underestimate, you don't like, don't even bat an eye at the 250 an hour, right? You got to think about that with whatever your goal is. So my, my whole thing is personal training. I charge, like I said, I charge a hundred bucks an hour for my services of a personal trainer. Some people, they charge 250. <laughs> I'm hundred percent serious. And they're not even in like Malibu, right? Um, but it's all based off of their their own time that they have available to their clients, um, how uh, niche their information and their um, uh, their specialty is, and then how fast they can give their clients um, success, right? <clears throat> yep, you can have this. My daughter's hungry. Um, so yeah, just kind of like re reevaluate your your thinking of oh man i can't i can't charge somebody that much money like i think of it this way like um i don't think of it like i wouldn't i would pay a, a personal trainer 100 bucks an hour it's like okay well how would you pay a personal trainer 100 bucks an hour if this was super important to you let's say you're overweight and um you want to you want to lose weight to be healthier right what would drive you to get a hundred dollar an hour trainer versus a thirty dollar an hour trainer? Me just saying it, you're like, well, hundred dollar an hour trainer, most likely way more experienced. I'm gonna get the results a little bit quicker. Um, probably not gonna get injured. Those are all a hundred percent true, right? Some people um, coming out of school, they'll just start a hundred bucks an hour and like kind of biting off a little bit more than they can chew because they're not building themselves up to be a good professional unless they're um you know already been doing it for years unless they've you know really kind of dug down into the niche or they're the only person in the entire area that does their certain thing um you really can't really like start off um 
super, super high price without a reason behind it. You know, I can't just be like, oh, I'm a hundred bucks an hour because I need to pay my bills. You know, <laughs> it doesn't really work like that. You're not really going to attract clients like that. Um, but the $30 an hour trainer, that's more for like group classes. Um, we can talk about, we'll definitely going to talk about that later. Um, but I just kind of want to give you an overview of like focus on how many hours a week you want to work, what you want to make. And then with those two numbers in mind, that is what's going to dictate what you charge per hour. Okay. That's the end of this video. I'm going to have you guys do that. And then we're going to move on to the next video. All right. Bye.